Good morning, Faith Lutheran, and welcome to this year's final broadcast. Today we have many fun and exciting stories, starting with the new Marvel movie. Kira went out to the theater to find out more. Kira? Hi, I'm Kira Bala with the FLNN, here at the South Point Casino to watch the new Marvel movie, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. I came to the theater a little bit early to interview employees and moviegoers about their reactions to the new movie. Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness has already made $45 million in advanced ticket sales, according to Screen Rant. It's projected by film critics that this movie will be almost as successful as Spider-Man No Way Home, which made $1.8 billion in box office sales worldwide. The cost of the movie was reportedly $200 million, and many fans are excited to see what director Sam Raimi will do next with the Marvel Cinematic Universe. What are your thoughts on Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness? Uh, my thoughts on the movie, I thought it was really interesting, mostly because its pacing was a lot different than most of the Marvel movies. So I did like it, and I think most people will like it, but it's one of those movies that you do have to know the other stories to kind of understand it. Uh, it was okay. It wasn't my favorite out of the MCU films, but it was good. Oh, it's terrible. There's a lot of things. I'm not going to get into it a lot, but it was, it was pretty bad. Uh, I would probably, for this one, I, I would put it at number 8 for me, just because there's a lot of movies, but I think this one does pretty well. I would probably put it at about a 10. It's definitely not my favorite of all of them. <laughs> um, well, it wasn't the worst movie, Black Widow's the worst, so but it was not good, so I'd put it right above Black Widow. You can purchase a movie theater ticket to any theater near you to watch Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. This is Kira B with the FLNN, back to you in the studio. Thank you, Kira. Well, movies weren't the only thing keeping Faith entertained. The Faith production of Phantom and the Opera took place this past weekend. Abby took us behind the scenes and gave us a closer look at the show. Abby? Hey everybody, I'm Abby Lisensky from the FLNN. Right now, I'm backstage at Phantom of the Opera. Come with me for a backstage look. The students in the show got the very unique opportunity of performing the Phantom of the Opera with choreo given by an original cast member from the Las Vegas Spectacular version. What was your favorite part of the show and why? Uh, I liked the boat sequence and then putting on the layer. I think my favorite part of the show would probably be the ending because it's just so many emotions happening at once, so many different things, and it just cheers me up every time. Who was your favorite character and why? bouquet because I really liked his death scene. I think my favorite character would have to be Phantom because there's just so many things about him that you discover throughout the musical and there's just so many different layers of emotion that he brings. And What was your opinion of the show? I've seen a lot of shows about Faith Luther and it, it, it was my favorite or close to my favorite. It was so amazingly well done. The singing was amazing. The acting was great and the set was fantastic. Who was your favorite character in the show? Um, I know Madison Smith really well, and so I really enjoyed watching her, uh, the, the part of Christine. Um, she just nailed every part of it. It was amazing. So I'd say that's probably she was my favorite character, although I loved the Phantom, and then Nassim did an incredible job, and Zach was amazing. So I really, I really loved it all. The show was a huge hit and sold out all three final nights of performance. I'm Abby Lisinski from the FLNN. Back to you. Thank you, Abby. With the start of summer comes the end of the hockey season. The NHL regular season just concluded and the Golden Knights missed the playoffs. Will finds out how people feel about this and who they think will win the Stanley Cup. Hi, I'm Will Case with the FLNN and the NHL playoffs are back. While the Golden Knights will not be in this year's playoffs for the first time in their five-year history, they must go on. The hottest and most favorable teams to win the Cup this year include the Panthers, the Avalanche, the Hurricanes, and the Maple Leafs. Let's go see who people think will take home the Cup. What are your thoughts on the Golden Knights missing the playoffs this year? I think it was well-deserved. It was tough. Um, there's excuses across the board for like 500 man games lost, how many, the injuries, the camaraderie, the difference. Um, but at the end of the day, they didn't win enough games against uh, the lesser teams. And so it was really disappointing. I think it's pretty sucky and that they need to get some new forwards that can score. Who do you think will win the Stanley Cup? I don't even know what kind of question that is. Isn't it obvious? It's the wild. 
Uh, right now, I just have a feeling about the Hurricanes. I think they've kind of gelled. They're, they're, they're hitting their stride at the right time, and I think that they could be the tough out. Uh, but they're coming out of the East, and it's going to be really hard. The Avalanche. As you can see, people are very disappointed that we won't see our Vegas Golden Knights on the ice this postseason. However, many people have mixed opinions on who will win the Stanley Cup this year. I personally believe that the Colorado Avalanche will win it. I'm Will Case with the FLNN, signing it back to you in the studio. Thank you, Will. Well, many students noticed the Faith parking lot becoming increasingly crowded over the course of the school year. Emmy investigates on why this is. Emmy? Many sophomores are getting their license, causing less spaces in the parking lot. Let's go investigate on this issue. What do you think about the sophomores getting their license? Um, I think that they need to go to driving class more. Um, how many times I've already been hit in the parking lot and it's not my fault and they literally hit my car while I was parked, because that makes sense. Um, I think that they first do not know how to drive and second of all, literally take up the rest of the senior parking. I feel like seniors should get first pick. Well, these sophomores, they're getting their licenses, licenses? Li li <laughs> they're getting their license and it's just, they don't know how to drive. I had a sophomore almost hit my car this morning and I had to get out and be like, dude, what was that? Have you seen parking change since the beginning of the year? Well, at the beginning of the year, it was kind of okay. Um, now we have people parking in other assigned places, which makes other people park in other assigned places and people parking in the shield. I have a lot of complaints now from students saying that they wish they would have extended the parking lot instead of building tennis courts. So it's pretty bad. Do you think the parking lot is big enough for students at Faith? Um, personally, I do not think that it is big enough. Um, they always complain that there's not enough parking and then they just added another parking that's all the way on like Narnia, we call it, because it always will make you late. It's just, I don't know, the, the parking needs to be better. I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> Please fix that for our future, our future drivers. Parking has always been a problem at Faith Lutheran. Uh, the county requires us to have 510 spaces, but we actually have 764, so we have made a pretty good effort to have more parking than we need. But the land at the north end of the football field is about an acre and a half, and we can park there. And we've even considered double decking over the parking behind softball, which extend over the road that runs right in front of the shield. Plans for new parking spots are being discussed, but in the meantime, make sure to come to school early and get a good parking spot. I'm Emmy Como from the FLNN, signing off. Thank you, Emmy. Well, that concludes the final broadcast of the year. To the class of 2022, congratulations. From the FLNN, I'm Sophia Bonner. God bless. Uh -huh.